Okay, welcome and to another edition of Chair Yoga. Uh, my name again is Karen Lyons and I'm coming to you from the Whitman Wellness Center. And today um, I've got a folding chair with me. I've got my blocks and blanket. And we're actually gonna start today standing up. Um, just make sure that whatever we do today that it's uh, an appropriate uh, move for yourself. You always wanna pay good attention to your own body. Even though that yoga is for every body, we still wanna be mindful of our own bodies and where we're at in the moment and knowing that wherever you're at, you're perfect, okay? So for today, we're gonna to start in what we call mountain pose, Tadasana. So I'm gonna bring, bring my, um, my feet together as best I can, my big toes together. I wanna to lift them up for a moment and then just place them down gently onto the floor. Now, if you'll notice, I have my chair on a mat and that's to keep it from sliding around. So you wanna make sure that whatever chair you're using, preferably without arms today, that it is on a, a nice clean surface and one that either is on a rug or a non-slip type surface. Because we are gonna be doing standing poses, you wanna make sure that the chair does not slip because you're gonna be using the chair as a prop, basically, okay? And again, making sure you've got blanket and block and belt if you have one. We may or may not use that today, however, okay? So finding that mountain pose, again, bringing the balance into our feet, and then just allow yourself to kind of calm yourself right down for a moment. Just, just kind of like find that stillness within, drawing the kneecaps up ever so gently. And then you might notice that you begin to engage the quadriceps. So you're engaging your quadriceps, tucking the tailbone ever so gently, inward, taking the shoulders up and around, drawing them down, and then letting fingertips be nice and heavy here so that we're standing up. Now draw your belly button into the back of your spine. And as you do that, you may find a natural lifting of the rib cage up and away from the pelvic bowl, up and away from the hip. And then just find a still point, find a, what we call drishti a point, a focal point for you to look at. Maybe for you it's where the floor and the, and the wall meet, or maybe you want to take your gaze a little higher, maybe where the ceiling and the wall meet. So you determine where you want to take your gaze to find your stillness. And we stand in Tadasana today just to find a little bit of breath now, inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the nose. And just soften the gaze, finding that stillness, allowing yourself to just let go of any frustrations, anxiety, stress, fear, any negative emotions that you may be feeling, anything negative that pops up physically, just allow it to just escape the body and the mind for just this next few moments that we're in this beautiful chair yoga. Inhaling and exhaling. Now maybe bringing an intention in for the practice, what it is that you would like to bring in, something positive into your day, into your evening. How is it that you'd like to go about your day or your evening? Good. Great. And then we're just going to start to use the chair for some stability. So taking your hand onto the back of the chair or on the arm of the chair, we're going to just start to lift up the opposite arm and reaching up and over the head to try to start to open up that side body. And I'm just pushing out my hip. Uh, we'll mirror image here for you today. So I'm pushing out my um, left hip, reaching over towards the right with my right hand onto the back of the chair, 
and I'm just reaching and opening up through that body. That whole nice rib cage just kind of peels away from the hip and the rib cage opens up and we bring the breath into that side body. Beautiful. And then coming down. Good. And then we'll do that again two more times on this side before we go on over to the other side. So reaching over, lift the chin up away from the chest. Breathe here. Finding equal amount of weight in the feet. Coming back down. Again, reaching up. So I'm going to try to push into the floor with as much weight on the right foot as I am on that left foot. So I'm not like leaning into my right. I'm really starting to create length in the right side of the body too, even though we're bending down on the right side. Good, and then coming back to center. And we're just gonna move over to the other side and take this on over to this side. First finding that mountain pose, reestablishing the pose, cultivating that again. So toes come up, bring the toes down, finding all four corners of your feet. You feel the toes as much as the heels. You're feeling the inner arch and the outer arch. We're lifting up through the kneecap tucking the tailbone ever so gently. And then we're gonna begin. So inhaling it up and reaching this time over the left with that right hand, keeping the chin up away from the chest. So try not to collapse that cervical spine. You wanna really reach here with the crown of the head, reaching with a straight arm on that right side, getting a nice open, curve in that right side of the body. But remember, push into the left side of that foot to really get the length. Good, and then inhale back. Now you may notice you stop breathing. Don't do that. You wanna continue your breath. So inhale, and then exhale, go on over. And now continue to breathe here. Don't hold your breath. Inhale through the nose, and exhale through the nose. And if you can, you just go ahead and inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. See if that's a little easier for you. And then coming back up. Good, and then one more time, inhaling all the way up and over, pressing that right hip out, reaching. Good. And then coming back to center. Great. Nice. And so now we're going to just come to the back of the chair and hold on to the, the back of the chair. Now hopefully you've got a chair that will allow you to do this. Now, if not, just take it to the side of the chair and kind of turn at an angle towards the chair. Because so all we're going to do is start to round at the spine. We're going to warm up the back of our spine now warmed up the side body. So now we're gonna open up through the back of the body. We're gonna tuck our chin in through our chest first. And then we're just gonna roll down and slide the hands down till they reach the chair pad. All the way down, let your head hang. And then begin to bend slightly at the knees, soften the knees, and then just roll it up. The chin's gonna come up last and up, okay? So again, if you have a high back chair and you're not able to do that, you can come to the side and it's just to start to roll. So we're gonna tuck the chin in first and then just kind of roll down nicely and slowly, soften the knees, one vertebra at a time, coming down, soften here, and then start to roll back up again, nice and slow, rolling, rolling, rolling. Good. And chin comes up, okay? Now the other thing you might wanna do is take the block onto the chair as well, so that you maybe only 
come up this way so you're rolling over holding on to your chair on, onto the block that's on the chair pad drop the head down and then roll up from the cervical spine or i should say from the lower spine first the cervical spine comes up last rolling it up and coming up to center beautiful so from here we're actually going to do cat cow using the chair so i'm going to come to this side of the chair Put my block here for now i'm going to step out of the chair my hands are on the chair itself okay and i'm going to duck and lift up my head for my cow pose and then i'm going to tuck and roll into my heavenly cat and then scoop it down tuck it up and then roll from the spine and then again tuck and roll and roll good So from here, what I'd like to try to do today, and if you're, you can't quite do this, don't worry. Um, you can just modify it. I'll, I'll show you how to modify it. But I'm gonna take my, wrap my leg out, so my leg's gonna come out at a nice angle, I'm gonna draw my toes down. So I'm, I'm not like this. My hip would come up towards the ceiling if my toes were out. I wanna dial my toes down towards the floor so that my hip is facing the chair. Now maybe this is all that you do, okay? Is lift that leg, maybe maybe it only comes up a little bit. Don't worry about it, you do you. And then come up, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is reach out with your opposite hand. Now this is a lot of core strength. I'm taking the belly button in the back of the spine, okay? If you need to, hold on to the back of the chair. And again, maybe you only do this. Toes on the floor and just hold. Take a couple of practice breaths in with that belly button in the back of the spine. Reaching up, folding. Okay. And then I'm gonna come down, place my hand on that again. And then I'm going to walk my feet out just ever so a little bit more and get this nice little stretch in the back called down dog. So my now my, my head comes down between my arms. I'm looking down towards my knees. This is an awesome stretch for the lower back. Great. And then I'm just going to take myself Back up and roll up nice and slow and gentle. <sighs> so now we're going to try that on the other side. So I'm just going to walk on over to the other side and we will try that again. So opposite hands this time. So again, I'm going to take myself out a little bit. This time I'm going to raise the other leg up and again, my hip is dialing down, my toes are towards the floor, and then I'm going to raise that opposite hand. And once again, if you need to hang on to the side or the back of the chair, go right ahead, okay? This is all core work. This is where you really need to pull that belly button in. You need to allow the, the uh, abdominal muscles to just really kind of help hold this in place. And then I'm taking that hand down and I'm gonna walk my feet out ever so gently and then come right on down and breathe. Great. And then coming back to standing, finding our mouth. So for now, I'm going to just take my chair. This time, I'm going to take my foot in. So I'm taking my left foot underneath the chair. I'm going to step this foot out a little bit. So the right foot comes out. 
and I square my hips. So my hips come forward. They're, you know, coming straight out. We're not turned. We're this way, straight out. And if I look down at my feet, which is really kind of important, I want to make sure that the heel of the foot that's underneath the chair is in line with the inseam of the back foot, so my right foot. Okay. So let's take this into um, uh, triangle pose, Utita Trikonasana. And if you've got your block on your um, chair pad, it might be helpful for you to put that right here. Okay. So this is about lengthening the spine. So we really want to like a teapot. So bring your hands onto your hips. And then if you just start to engage the hip, think about the hip. Don't think about the shoulders or the legs or anything. Just think about pushing that hip, dialing that hip down, You're kind of hinging at the hip like a little teapot, right? You can bring your hand down onto the block and know remember you have different sizes. So it might be this way, you might want it this way, maybe it works better for you this way. I'm going to bring mine right about here. I actually don't, probably don't even need the block. I'm going to bring it right down onto the chair pad itself. Now this right hand that's on my hip can stay right there. And this can be your triangle pose, your Ipu Tita Trikonasana, okay? I'm gonna raise my arm up straight and tall, try to get my shoulders in line with one another. And then I'm gonna reach back a little bit. So I'm kind of trying to reach back towards the back of the wall to open up through my spine. I'm reaching out with my crown of my head, and I'm breathing. So this is again our Utita Trikonasana. Good. Now if you'll notice, you may not even notice, but my foot underneath the chair is up a little bit. But that's because of my foot injury that I had earlier this year. I'm still working on that. So my flexion isn't really quite where it is right now. But that's okay. I can modify by just coming up onto the heel a little bit. And you can do the same thing if you have any kind of ankle issues at all, or even knee issues. You might need to bend your knees a little bit. That's okay. Go ahead and bend and soften the knee. Now to come up, cool work. We're gonna take ourselves all the way up like that teapot and bring the hands in. Beautiful. Now while we're here, we're going to take it into what we call Varadrasana 3. So this is again a balanced posture. So do what you can do and don't worry about it. Maybe just watch this video for a while until you get the hang of it and then go from there. So I'm just going to dial around again and bring my body back over towards the chair pad. Remember how we did this, right? And again, I'm lifting that leg up and I'm holding on. All right, and then again, lifting out. This is that balance posture. Good. And then come all the way up. I'm gonna step this foot back a little bit and then that front knee, hold onto the chair and find my mirror of a dressing room one. Okay, and if I need to have my hand on my hip, I put my hand on the hip. And then step that foot forward, shake it out a little bit, and just come on down to the back of the chair. And we'll, before we do this side, we're going to do a few little plies. So we're just going to bend at the knee, maybe come up onto the toes, and then down, and then come up. Bend at the knee, come on to the toes down and come up. And then if you can't go on your toes, don't worry about that either. Bend and come up. Good. All right, you're ready for the other side. Here we go. So I'm going to take it to Utita Trikonasana. It's called triangle pose. Utita means stretch. Okay, Trikonasana triangle. So this foot goes underneath the chair, line it up, 
And then this one comes into that angle. So check out your feet. Bring your hands on your hips. Okay, now it's just your hips that you're gonna be moving here. We're just gonna kind of seesaw down a little bit, open up through the heart. So try not to collapse forward, all right? Try to keep the torso way, uh, way back and bring the hand down onto the chair for some guidance and some support. Okay, now if you need to keep your hand in your pocket here, go ahead. Maybe you bring it to the back. This is nice to open up the shoulder, bringing the hand to the back. And if you're ready, you can just bring that arm up. Take that gaze back. Roll that shoulder back, roll the hip forward a little bit, and breathe. Good. And then we're gonna come down and around, and we took it here, and I'm gonna dial my foot up, turn it around, and then I'm just gonna kick it back up, finding that Varadrasana three again. On the side, raising the arm up. And then soften the knee, bend the knee, bring that foot down, and find your way into Virabhadrasana 1. So here the front foot is bent, the knee is bent a little bit, and you're on the full, full foot on the back side of that left foot is down. Good. Hand comes down, legs come up, find that mountain pose. Good. Take a nice inhale up and exhale. Now coming to the chair itself, we're going to do a chair pose. So this is Ukatasana. So have your body right in line with the chair. I'm going to reach out, bending at the knees. So I'm bending here at the knees. Right, my arms are straight. Okay. Feet are together. Ukkatasana, chair pose. And then bring my hands down. Find the chair. And sit down. Woo! <laughs> All right. Good job. So take a couple of sun breaths here. Inhaling up. And exhaling down, inhaling up, palms face up, palms try to touch over your head, flip the palms and exhale down. Good. Taking a little twist now. So I'm going to take my right hand onto the outer edge of my right uh, left knee and I'm going to lift up and I'm going to rotate on over, looking over towards the left, finding breath, unwinding, and then coming to the other side. So left hand on outer edge of that knee, and take my hand on the outside edge of the chair, and I'm lifting up and rotating over. And breathing. Good twist. And then coming back. Good. Let's take our block again. You know, you may find this one may or may not need the block. I'm going to take the block this way and just place it on my lap. I'm going to take that sun breath, inhaling up. I'm going to clasp my hands and reach through the palms of my hands as best I can, getting some beautiful length. Reach, 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 reach. And breathing, don't stop breathing. <laughs> breathe, breathe, breathe. Then I'm gonna take my hands and just slide down my back and caress my um, occipital ridge on my skull and my elbows. And I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna kind of bring my elbows. We're gonna tuck and roll all the way down and see if the elbows can't touch the block. So we're gonna come all the way down, tuck, 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 tuck and roll. And breathe here into the back body. And then as I inhale, I begin to roll up. The arms come up and we open wide. 
and then the arms come up into a V and exhale down, okay? So we're like butterflies. We, we start in a little cocoon and then we spread our wings wide, okay? So let's try that again. So inhaling it up, clasp the hands, reach, 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 reach. Get some nice length, wiggle around maybe a little bit. And then draw those hands down behind your back or down behind your skull and then start to tuck and roll. Really roll everything in, squeeze it tight. And then inhaling, as you inhale, bring it all back out. Open it wide. Really reach those elbows really away from the armpit and reach the arms up wide and exhale down, beautiful. Now let's just roll our shoulders on. Roll back, take the arms back with them. Palms can be facing backwards, forwards. And then let's just take it forward. Big sweeps with the arms. Good. And back, so good. So I'm gonna take now a pigeon posture. So let's first of all, reach out, open up our hamstrings, and slide one leg out, and then the other leg out. My toes are up, and then I'm gonna lift up, kind of in a back plank in position. My butterflies are still on the floor, I mean, still on the chair. My hands are on the side of the chair for some support. I'm just reaching out, nice little plank pose. And then slide those feet back in. Take the left knee, bring it and draw it in, and then cross it on over that leg. Now you should be about halfway off the chair. Okay, so you don't want to sit too far back. Okay, you want to kind of slide about halfway off the chair pad. Okay. And then we're lifting up here. So lift up. Take a nice deep breath in. Exhale out. Good. Now, if this isn't doable for you, you can certainly just cross at the ankles, okay? So always remember that. Okay? We're gonna come on up. Now I'm gonna take that right hand again on that left knee. I'm gonna take this hand and I'm reaching towards the back of the chair to help me get the twist. Right on over. And breathing. Good. Now I'm going to cross my foot right on over. Okay? Now I might be able to get a little deeper in that, into that twist. Pleasing the thighs together. Really starting to reach up with the crown of the head to help elongate the spine, which will help us get that twist. Good, and then unwind, and then bringing the feet out again, kind of have them cross at the ankles. We're gonna lift up, and then taking the opposite hand and reach down as far as you can. So maybe you only reach to your knee or your shin. It's all okay. Just reach as far as you can. If you can reach your toes, great. But don't strive for them. Don't let your ego mind get in the way. Just go where you need to go. As long as you're moving, it's all good. <laughs> and then slowly and gently, you want to come back up. Take a couple of sun breaths here. So inhaling it up. Exhaling it down. Inhaling, hands, the palms are just coming up. We flip the palms and then go down. Good, and one more time. Inhaling. And exhaling. Beautiful. All right. So go to the other side. We're going to take that knee in and then Cross it right on over, lifting up, 
and then twisting. So this time it's the left hand that comes onto the knee, and then we take that other hand around to help us get that twist. So twisting is really good, um, you know, for our organs, our internal organs. Cross the leg a little deeper. See if you can't get the twist in a little deeper. Keep the spine nice and tall. Keep the uh, shoulders soft. Try not to get your shoulders up. Keep them down away from the ears. And do this nice cleansing twist. And massaging our inner organs. Kind of giving ourselves a little massage from the inside. Out, right? Twisting around. And then coming back to center, nice and slow. And again, crossing at the ankles again. I'm just going to an angle so you can see my feet coming up, taking that opposite hand and reaching down. You might want to hold on to the chair with the other hand. We're just reaching. Like you're going to tie your shoes. Up, nice and slow and gentle. We'll come back up. Great. Take another couple of sun breaths. So inhale up. Exhale down. And inhale up. Let's take our hands again, clasp them, bring them on up, reach out, then bring them behind that head again. Lifting up. And all we're going to do is lean over to the right side. See if you can keep your wings open. Keep the wings open and just lean over to the one side. Now we've done quite a bit of bending and some the side body, so this is just to keep it opening it up. And then come back to center and then over to the other side. So reach with the elbows. Really leaning into it here. Keep the chin up away from the chest. Keep your knees and your legs together if you can. The feet are firmly grounded onto the floor as we're leaning over. And then coming back. And then exhale those hands out. Good. And good. All right. So, We'll try and isolate just the rib cage now. So just kind of moving the rib cage to side, each side, back and forth, so that the hips are staying as stationary as possible, and the movement is only coming from the rib cage. Good. A little hard to do to isolate, and then going back and forth, just the rib cage. And then see if you can't make circles just using your rib cage. Isolating that movement. And then maybe the other side. And then of course we can just kind of open up a little bit and then really start to work the hip joint and make bigger circles now. This time we're really using the hips to help us do this and the torso to help us. So the rib cage is just kind of hanging on for the ride. Good. And then maybe taking it over to the other side. And right into it. Inhale up, and we'll just kind of bring out the wrists a little, bring out the arms. And for today's Shavasana, what I'd like to do is bring my blanket in. So I'm going to grab my blanket, and if you don't have one, that's okay. You know, grab it for the next time. Just it's always have, nice to have it handy. But I'm going to roll it up like so, 
And I think I might even use my block too. I'm gonna to put the block on my lap. I'm gonna put the blanket right on top. And I'm just gonna kinda of take myself and rolling myself over the blanket. Maybe let my chin rest on the blanket and just hang out here. This is a beautiful way of opening up the body in a nice gentle way, allowing the breath to come in. You feel the breath coming in, inhaling and exhaling. Very restorative, very soothing, very calming. So just finding the stillness for a moment, finding the connection with your breath. And if that, you know, leaning over doesn't work for you by all means, you can just, you know, sit way back into the chair, finding some planted feet, let your hands rest on top of your lap, maybe with the palms faced up for receiving, receiving beautiful, loving light and energy. Gyan Mudra is when we put our forefinger and our thumb together, rest of the three fingers are spread out, elbows are tucked in towards our ribcage. So maybe this is where you want to hang out for a little bit. The more important thing is that you do find a few moments each and every day, you know, even if it's only five minutes, to just take a moment and go within, find your souls, find your breath, reconnect with you, and just find that stillness. It's so important, especially in today's day and age. We really need to find that beautiful stillness, that beautiful love and light that resides within us. So take a few nice deep breaths in through the nose. With a wide open mouth, let it out. And again, through the nose. Wide open mouth, let it out. Beautiful. And maybe you soften the gaze a little bit more. Well, I'd like to thank you again for joining me in this practice of standing postures in Uttita Trikonasana, in our Tadasana, and our Varadrasana 3. I hope to see you again, but until then, remember that the love and the light that you shine upon myself and those around you is the same love and light that shines back at you. So we draw our thumbs to our third eye, draw the elbows together, Lift our heads up, lift our spirits up, lift our minds up, and then bow in gratitude and say, Namaste. Thank you, everybody, and hope to see you again soon.